morning, brothers and sisters. Today's Bible reading is taken from Luke chapter 24, 25 to 35. Luke chapter 24, verse 25. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if they were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, and blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us when he talked to us on the road, when he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Good morning, church. How do you know that you are getting old? How do you know you are getting old? There are many ways that tell you if you are getting old. For example, um, you, you can remember, you can remember events from long ago, but you cannot remember most recent events. And I like this one. How, how, how do you know you are getting old? The old woman who accompanied you across the road was your wife. I like that one. How, how do you know you are getting old? Somehow, you just know it. You just know it when you are getting old. Now, how do you know that your heart, your heart is getting cold towards Jesus? How do you know? Somehow, you just know it. You just know it, that you are getting cold towards Jesus. Today, is your heart getting cold? This is the question that we want to ask today. Is your heart getting cold today? Are you excited about coming to church to worship with one another? Do you desire to read the Word of God and to pray? How's your heart's condition? I pray that the text we read today will speak to our hearts. In Luke chapter 24, we see a trilogy of journeys. The other week, we talk about the first journey, the journey to the tomb, the place of death. Today, we want to talk about the second episode, the journey to Emmaus, the place of despair. Next Sunday, we want to talk about the third episode, the journey to Jerusalem, the place of renewal. It was late in the day on the first Resurrection Sunday. Two disciples of Jesus were on their way to Emmaus. We do not know if they were going back home after celebrating the Passover feast in Jerusalem, or they were running away from their home in Jerusalem. We do not know about that. But we know one thing. Look at verse 15. While they were on the road and were hotly debating with one another, Jesus showed up. It was as if Jesus, by chance that Jesus caught up with them. And look at verse 16. Their eyes were kept from 
recognizing Jesus. They did not recognize Jesus. Had they been following Jesus very closely? How come they could not recognize Jesus? The last time they saw Jesus was He was dead. He was gone forever, never to return. So when Jesus initiated a conversation with them, they were very sad. Look at verse 17. Jesus asked them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And the last part of verse 17, they stood still looking sad. The word sad is a very rare word, um, which that, uh, does not just describe a face twisted with grief. It is a mixture of weariness, anxiety, and lostness. One disciple by the name of Cleopas told Jesus all the things that had happened over the past three days in Jerusalem. They had followed Jesus, hoping that Jesus would do one great task. Jesus was for them a prophet mighty in words and in deeds. They had hoped that Jesus would do what they expected Him to do and the way He should do it. They thought that Jesus would lead an army and overthrow the Romans. But the unthinkable occurred. This Jesus, this Jesus, this Jesus, betrayed by one of His disciples, denied by His closest disciple, abandoned by His closest friends, and despised by the people, had died the most shameful death of a criminal. Their hope died with Him on the cross that dark Friday. Their hearts were broken and their worlds had fallen apart. The report, even the report from the woman, women and the disciples was for them too good to be true. In verse 24, Cleopas told Jesus, Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. The disciples, the two of them were confused about who Jesus really was. And they were angry at the authorities who crucified Jesus. And they were disappointed. They were dis disappointed because this Jesus, the Jesus they believed in, they, they, they had hope in, failed them terribly. They went on the road to Emmaus, a journey of escape from their broken hearts. By the way, do you know that this particular incident, this particular incident is only found in the Gospel of Luke? And also, do you know that this incident, this is more than a spiritual journey than a literal one. Luke wanted to teach the early church about their journey by recounting the journey of the two disciples. You see, this is not just the story of the disciples' journey to Emmaus. It is our story and it is our journey. A mother who had just lost her teenage son cried until she had no tears to wet her eyes. Her heart was crushed. That was his, her road to Emmaus. A father just lost his business and accumulated tons of debts. Every night, he went home drunk. That was his road to Emmaus. A student after several tries, still failed in his exam. His dream to go to a good school was shattered and he vowed never to return to school. That was his road to Emmaus. A young father who, just, who was just diagnosed with the final stage cancer felt lost and didn't know how, did not know how to reveal to it to his wife, who was pregnant with their second child. That was his road to Emmaus. 
church, what is your road to Emmaus? Do you come to worship today feeling that God has let you down? Is your heart broken? Do you pray for healing but nothing happens? Do you talk to God about a relationship, but it seems to get worse? Do you ask for a peace of mind, but your mind is even more confused than ever? Is your heart broken today? What would you do if the Jesus you trusted in, believed and hoped in has failed you? The disciples thought that Jesus had died, so had their hope. Then, our Lord Jesus broke His silence. In verse 25, He said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe that all that the prophets have spoken. Jesus called them, Foolish ones, the ones who did not know and understand God, the ones whose hearts were slow. The phrase slow of heart, the, the phrase slow of heart is one important theme in the Gospel of Luke. It is not about being slow in motion, but slow in spiritual perception. Slowness of heart does not refer to lack of affection, but lack of spiritual vitality and spiritual insight. Notice that Jesus did not blame them, blame the disciples for not recognizing Him or for not believing in His prediction about His passion or the inability to discern the meaning of the recent events. Jesus did not re blame them for all those, but Jesus rebuked them for their spiritual blindness, for their spiritual conditions. What is slow of heart? Slow of heart is when you are tired of reading the Word of God and you begin to start to give excuses. What is slow of heart? Slow of heart is when you cannot focus, you cannot concentrate your thoughts in praying and you do not know what to pray for. Slow of heart is when you compromise and succumb to temptation and you don't feel sorry about it. Slow of heart is when you seek first the kingdom of this world rather than the kingdom of God. What is slow of heart? Slow of heart is when you fear men more than you fear God. What is slow of heart? Slow of heart is when you are being more critical than being more gracious towards others. What is slow of heart? Slow of heart is when you don't care for the lost souls and God's creation. What is slow of heart? Slow of heart is when you are no longer aware of your own spiritual conditions and the spiritual conditions of the church. And let me illustrate. In 1961, the famous pen painting of uh, the well-known French artist Henri Matisse, the boat, was on display in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Over one and a half months, 116,000 people visited that painting. 116,000. And you guess what? For one and a half months, no one noticed anything wrong. And then came an amateur viewer, a lady. And she saw it. She went to the people in the museum and told them that, Sir, you have hung the picture upside down. Over one and a half months, 116,000 people viewed that painting and no one noticed something was wrong. Not even the son of the painter. This is slowness of heart. You see, church, we are a group of people, a faith community 
We get together, we praise one another, right? We, we, we say good things about one another. We encourage one another. We, are, we, look, we appear to be like a group of admiration society full of praising, sympathizing, comforting one another. Everything seems to be okay, well, fine. But all the time, the condition of the church is degenerating from bad to worse. This is slowness of hearts. The fundamental problem of slowness of, of hearts is the incomplete understanding of scriptures, of the scriptures. Look at the disciples. When they came to a fuller understanding of the word of God, what happened to them? Their broken hearts were restored. And the slowness of their hearts turned to burning hearts. The antidote, the antidote to slowness of hearts is the word of God. Martin Luther rightly said, the Bible, the Bible is the cradle where we find the infant Jesus. The Bible is the cradle where we find the infant Christ. When the Word of God is read, when the Word of God is preached, when the Word of God is received, our Lord Jesus is present. Our Lord Jesus is manifested. Just like in the Holy Communion, He is present in our midst. I like this story about a woman, uh, a woman who was reading a bedtime story uh, to her little daughter. While she was reading the story to the daughter, the doorbell rang. So the mother got up to answer the doorbell. And that little girl said, Mommy, don't leave me here by myself. I'm scared. Don't, don't go. Don't go. The mom said, There is no need to be scared. Jesus is with you. Don't be afraid. That little girl replied, Send Jesus to answer the door. You stay here with me, mom. How clever, right? Oftentimes, Jesus comes to us, but our eyes are kept from recognizing Him. Let me ask, how do you believe? How do you trust? How do you hope in someone whom you cannot see? It was on the road to Emmaus, on the journey of despair, that the lost disciples found a new direction. The road of despair turned out to be the road of delight. How so? It all began, it all began with them pleading with Jesus to stay with them. Look at verse 28 and 29. They drew near, so they drew near to the village to which they were going. He, Jesus, acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening and the day is now far spent. So Jesus went in to stay with them. You know the phrase, stay with us, became the inspiration of the Scottish composer, Henry Francis Light, who wrote the famous hymn, Abide With Us. Do you remember the song? Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. It was this one simple request that brought the disciples on the road to Emmaus to fuller understanding of who the Lord Jesus was. It was only a plea, yet it made such a profound transformation. Look at verses 31, 30 and 31. When they saw Jesus taking and giving thanks for the bread, and when they saw Jesus breaking it and giving it to them, 
the coverings fell from their eyes and they began to recognize Jesus. And they remembered. Now, this is so interesting. They remembered that Jesus was with them all the while. Jesus was with them all the way on the road to Emmaus. Jesus was with them on the journey of despair all the way. They said to each other in verse 32, did not our hearts burn within us while He talked to us on the road, while He opened to us the Scriptures? The slowness of their hearts turned to hearts burning with fire only when the Word of God was interpreted to them. Sad to say, we always forget that Jesus is right beside us, walking with us, speaking with us. It is us who are not with Him. We did not stand with Jesus on the mount of temptation. We had not spent a night with Him in his loneliest prayer. We have not watched him when his closest disciples slept through the night. We were not there when he was betrayed. We were not there when he struggled and prayed and his sweat, and his sweat fell on the earth like drops of blood. We were not there when he was crucified. Indeed, our Lord is always the lonely one. He is always the lonely one. But He is entirely majestic and supreme. He might be hidden from the world, but He is present here with us. Do you see that? He is our burning heart. But we must plead with Him, stay with us, Lord, for night is coming. Let us come back to verse 30. We see that our Lord Jesus fed the disciples not just with the bread, but with the Word of God. Jesus fed them with He Himself, with His body, His life, His death, His resurrection, His love, His strength. His hope. Jesus fed them with all that He is and all that He has. Then, Jesus vanished from their sight. This is difficult. Jesus vanished from their sight. What was Luke trying to tell us? Was Jesus abandoning them? No, no. Luke was telling us that Jesus was no longer before them because, because Jesus was now in them. Jesus became the burning heart in them. And John Calvin understood this. So he had a seal with a picture of a burning heart with a hand carrying it accompanied with this motto, promptly and sincerely in the work of God. The disciples' encounter Jesus, with Jesus was exceptional. It impacted them on the inside. It moved their very hearts. Their eyes were no longer the same, and their hearts were no longer the same. And they escape no more. In the middle of the night, they return to Jerusalem. Again, from Emmaus, they return to Jerusalem. They return and rejoin the Christian community. They return and rejoin the Christian journey. Do you see something 
very interesting and profound here. A broken hearts, slow of hearts, slowness of hearts, and then burning hearts. Do you see the pattern of a journey? Jerusalem, Emmaus, and then back to Jerusalem. The road to Emmaus is more of a spiritual journey than a literal one. There is a Jerusalem in every one of us. There is, a Jeru- there is an Emmaus in all of us. Here we see a journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus and then back to Jerusalem. It is a journey that each of us has taken, is taking, or will take. A journey that each of us must take again and again. What is your journey to Emmaus? During the World War II, there was a doctor in Paris by the name of Anthony Bloom, who was an atheist. This, this guy was very anti Christian, and he hated, he hated everything, anything to do with God. And one day, he heard a preaching about Jesus and the Christian faith. While he was listening to it, he got angrier and angrier. He got so angry, but you see, that guy was a doctor. So he told himself, no, I want to find out more before I reject it, before I reject the message. So he went home. And he went home, he found the shortest gospel, gospel of Mark. And he began to read the gospel of Mark. And this is what he wrote in one of his books, beginning to pray. He, he said this, Before I reached the third chapter, I suddenly became aware that on the other side of my desk, there was a presence. There was a presence on the other side of my desk. And the certainty, the certainty was so strong that it was Christ standing there that it has never left me. This is his own words. And the certainty was so strong that it was Christ standing there that it has never left me. This was the real turning point. Because Christ was alive and I had been in His presence, I could say with certainty that what the gospel said about the crucifixion of the prophet from Galilee was true. And the centurion was right when he said, truly, He is the Son of God. Strictly speaking, Anthony didn't see anything. But, he had obviously encountered the risen Christ when he opened the Bible. He strongly felt the presence of Jesus Christ. It was so powerful that it changed the rest of his life. And later on, he became the archbishop of the Russian Orthodox in Great Britain and Ireland. And he wrote many books on prayer and spiritual life, which have become classics. Church, how's your heart's condition? How's your journey to Emmaus? Do you see Jesus Christ right beside you? Do you see His presence? Come and be fed on His Word. When the Word is read, when the Word is preached, when the Word is received, our Lord Jesus Christ will again incarnate among us. He will be our burning heart. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, You are the most holy and supreme one. You always walk with us and journey with us. You are the faithful companion on our way to Emmaus. Yet we fail to recognize you. Forgive us, O Lord, for being the foolish ones and slow of heart. 
Our Father, we pray today that you restore our broken hearts, rekindle our slowness of our hearts, so we can burn brightly and intensely for you. Show us your word. Let your word plant deep in our hearts and be lived out in our lives so that we may see Jesus and that others will see Jesus through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.